So here we are today to talk about balance. And uh, the reason why I am uh, saying uh, physical balance is because usually that's, uh, that's what people ask me the most is that as we age, <laughs> as we age, we start, we don't play anymore. When we are kids, we go in the train and we play, right? We go in the sidewalk and we go trying to walk one foot at a time. So we do lots of things with our body. We dance, we go out, we dance. So we submit our body to a lot of movements that actually takes our balance away and the body then recovers the balance. So I have to say that uh, uh, the movement, the walking, for example, the technical explanation of a walking is a successive, successive uh, movement that takes your balance away. So when you're standing, you're steady. When you put one foot forward and one foot is in the air, you lose your balance. So walking actually is an activity of catching up your balance so you don't fall. So that's technically how we study kinesiology, talking. We study the walking. The walking is you lose your balance and then the foot goes to the floor. You lose your balance. It's not that ugly. It's a little bit more gracious. But you put one foot in the air and you lose your balance and you place your foot on the floor, you reestablish your balance. And then you take the other one. So, and then that's what balance is. When you are losing your balance, something happened. It's uh, here in our central computer that uh, activates everything. Our ears, remember we talk about vertigo and the people get out of balance. Cere cerebellar, people with Parkinson, they have a cerebellum sometimes a com like co a compromised and they lose the balance besides many other things. So the leg, you break your leg or even if you numb, if you sit on one leg and you put the foot thinking that you can walk and it's numb, you lose your balance because you count on all of that. So balance is not about the legs. That's the first thing I want to say. Balance is about the synchronicity in harmony of everything. Your trunk is very much responsible for your balance as well. Because if your leg is not going and your trunk is rigid, you fall. We do things like this, right? To reestablish our balance. So the trunk and the leg and the arms. Sometimes I remember I'm doing extra balance exercise. The first thing that people do is to compensate with the arms. And then I said, no, 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 put your arms down. And then it's much harder to recover the balance. So balance is that uh, harmonious, uh, amazing uh, connection of the body, the entire body and the nervous system not to let you fall. That's what the balance is. So I want you, I want you write down right now. You don't need to show me. You don't need even to share if you don't want. For you, what balance is in your life, right? In your life, thank God you don't have any disease, right? But even if you are watching us and you have anything that is compromising your balance, what balance is for you? You can talk about physically, that I already gave a little bit of, uh, of information, and you can talk about balance in general. What's balance for you? <laughs> well, I was going to say loss of control, but that's not being balanced. But the feeling of losing control of your body, to me, balance 
I want to stay balanced so that I don't lose that. Or if I lose that, that I know how to correct it before I hit the ground, you know? So it's that and the stability of staying prone or whatever, where I want to be. To keep that, yourself a vertical, right? <laughs> yeah. I, 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 you know, it's that, <laughs> that feeling of loss of balance is what I think of about balance. It's like, and that's the scary part is that I'm going to lose my balance and I'm going to fall. So I do everything I can to not. Um, mm -hmm. So I'm just trying to maintain that vertical center of gravity feeling. So mm -hmm. that's where I, that's my personal. Yes. Yes. And, uh, and, uh, and it is balance is so many things, right, Debbie? And yeah. It, what you just said is also balance. And the one thing that I think it's very important is that uh, when we are not well, yeah. you, for example, uh, let's say that you're driving and somebody cuts you and you almost hit a lady with a baby in her lap. They are they are crossing the street. You're, you're there. You're stopped. But somebody cuts cut you in a way that you almost lose all your control. You get shaky and you, you almost killed two people and you, it's not your fault. So probably in that moment, if you are coming to the studio and uh, I put you to do a balance test. Wouldn't be able to do it. It won't be. And physically you are well. Yeah. But emotionally. The headspace is all out. I mean, just even a, a slightest ear infection, your ears, the, your, your balance to me is always in your ears, which is if you, it, it's like if my head is congested with a cold, that's when I seem to lose that ability because that balance is not there. I And, and I know in, standing if i've been sitting or laying in a prone position i have to stand upright vertical and like the fluids in my body have to now align before i take that first step so that i don't fall over or you know lose my lose control so it's like i always that me i have to let the head the fluids that are in our body get into like alignment it's like mm -hmm. okay I'm and imagine good. imagine that the people that have their feet always numb they can't feel oh that's got to be right? awful or they had an injury and yeah. they had for example burnt imagine that somebody burned to one foot yeah so you're not feeling that foot well the balance will be so the rest of the body is working but that, so that's what I, I, I think this is such an amazing theme for us to discuss because it depends on the, all these combination of things. Yeah. Once I remember one of my clients, her, she was distracted. It was very hot and she went to put the trash away and her dog came after her and burned his paws on the cement. He couldn't walk. Yeah. <laughs> Right, it just everything was perfect with him. It took but, her a while to understand what was going on because of the it's not big burnt, but it was sensitive, and probably he is not feeling enough to give him the grip that yeah. he needs to be in with the balance a hundred percent. So the balance also counts on your emotional state. Oh, yeah, if you have a headache, for example, you're not. Nothing is bad emotionally with you, but you have your head pounding. Or even if you have your arm that is on uh, immobilization, it takes this little piece of your body off the help. You, If you trip and you're holding your cell phone in your hand, probably you fall and you hit your shoulder or your face because that arm won't be helping you. So it's a, this beautiful thing. So I have a little, a little video, a very short video that I would like to show you. Uh,
that talks a little bit about when you wanna when you wanna develop something. You told me about what is not balance. Yeah. I said a little bit what is balance. Now let's see how you can apply a concept of how we recover the balance, okay? When the balance is compromised somehow. So let me share here my screen. Let me just prepare here one thing for you. Yes. Are you seeing my screen by any chance or you're looking Not at yet. me? You're looking at you. me. I'm looking at you. <laughs> you look at me. <laughs> let me just get here. There we go. Yes. So I'll put this very short video. It's uh, two minutes, less than two minutes. And I want to be very aware and attempt to this dialogue. That's very powerful, very beautiful, and has everything to be with who we are talking today. Ready? Yep. Excuse me. Can I get a refill, please? Coming right up. Are you all right? Yeah. No. Oh, sorry. Well, I like stories. I'm considered a bit of a storyteller myself. My husband, you heard of New York's Noah? <laughs> the guy who's building the art. That's him. I love that story. No one in the art. You know, a lot of people make the point of that story. They think it's about God, wrath, and anger. They love it when God gets angry. What is the story about then, the Ark? Well, I think it's a love story about believing in each other. You know, the animals showed up in Paris. They stood by each other, side by side, just like Noah and his family. Everybody get up the Ark, side by side. But my husband says God told him to do it. What do you do with that? Sounds like an opportunity. Let me ask you something. If someone prays for patience, you think God gives them patience? Or does he give them the opportunity to be patient? If they pray for courage, does God give them courage? Or does he give them opportunity to be courageous? If someone prays for family to be close, do you think God zaps them with warm, fuzzy feelings? Or does he give them opportunities to love each other? Enjoy. <laughs> wow. <laughs> I always, I, I hear this a lot and um, I get very emotional. And uh, when I have my coaching, oops, I'm sorry. I think it's uh, starting again. Uh, well, you're on the screen, so. Uh, that's okay. You're good? Yeah. You're good now. So um, that's what sometimes we are looking for solutions to our problems. And uh, if you are religious or not, if you pray or not, if you sometimes say God, blah, blah, or by angels, the universe, whatever you want to call, but you ask for help. Sometimes we, we are not asking for help. We want the solution coming as magic and actually uh, if you ask for patience as the video says we will get opportunities I mean lots of people to take your patience away yeah. <laughs> what I call people <laughs> those kind of people will show up in your life in many colors shapes and forms online marketing at your door friends clients bosses to just take your patience away so you develop what you ask it for that's called patience. patience right so we we don't understand this how can you develop strength i can ask god i want to have a, an amazing abdominal 
in the biceps and triceps and quads and wow, I want to be so strong. What you have to do? Go to the gym and feel weak. You have to get those three pounds <laughs> and feel like, an, oh my God, and then the five and the 10. You build up, giving you what? The opposite of what you asked for. Why? For you to have an opportunity to build up what you need. And this is uh, in any area, even financial. Sometimes you need to go to really below zero. So why? Why? I, I need, I, I'm a good person. Da, 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 da. Why? Because that's the way you learn how to budget. That's the way how you learn how to save. That's the way you will re really have the temptation to get a, use a credit card or ask for money, to borrow money. But if you learn how to stay firm and still there, it's your first step for wealth. Because if you get a lot of money, but you didn't learn the basics, you will lose it. Yeah. <laughs> you yeah. waste it. That's what happened with most of people that win the lottery. There is a huge psychology uh, uh, study. They, they are regular people. They win a lot of money. They lose it all. And plus, they get in huge debt, like $100,000 debt or more. Why? Because they go, 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 go in a lifestyle and never learn to what it is to have money. Yeah. Imagine a bunch of money, an abundance of money. So this happens with all of us. Sometimes we want to love companion. You need to learn how to live with yourself, how to get your strength, how, how to face your own difficulties and flaws in order to have a partner and really be, not to have the partner you dreamed of, but to be the partner that the other one dreamed of, of too. So this, in this game of what the video is saying is what happened with the balance. The way we train balance is taking the client balance away. There is no other way to do that. So for example, if you are... Uh, have, people are just uh, because they twist their foot, their ankle are weak, the ankle is weak, or the, it's an old lady that uh, the family is start to watching that she's not uh, walking really the way she used to, or after a broken bone or a surgery that she was too long in a hospital bed or whatever it is, or as, as after COVID, everybody stayed sitting much more in the house, right? So after this kind of situation and the family observed, my mom doesn't admit, but I think her balance is, uh, is a little bit off. So when the lady comes to me, what I will do? Bling, my magic wand and we're like, uh, balance for you, lady. No, I have to take the lady put her in situations that, that I take the, her balance away. So she will develop that harmonious connection with the brain and everything else to recover the balance. Like the muscle when we go to the gym that we need to go one by one, little by little to get strong as a whole. So one of the things that's important about balance is that in the, any kind of other training, but mostly balance, is that we have sensors in our feet, legs, hips, trunk, your spine, neck, arms, you have sensors like a nervous, the nervous system, peripheral, and also the central that are giving information to our brain of everything that's happening. Plus all the organs. If you're hungry, if you are not feeling good, if the, if the liver is not producing the bio and everything, the, the brain is that big central 
of information and also the big center of decision and action making. So the brain gets everything 24-7. What's going on? It's not memory. We don't have conscious of that. Imagine if I have conscious how much juice has in my stomach, <laughs> how much things has in my intestine, how much my, it will be, how much my, my heart is, is pulsing. It will be crazy. So it's not conscious. It's a brain, not in a level of memory, but the brain is a, is a system, a nervous system organ, captures everything. And once it captures, it makes the connections with the who is responsible for what and send the order, send the command. And when this command gets in the right place, then the results start coming up. So what we therapists do is to understand the entire mechanism of catching information, get integrate and sending the action making information so we can use this to help to recover people from whatever it is. In our case here today, in this masterclass, we are talking about balance. So that's why when we are doing some exercise of balance, I don't let anybody use compensation, right? I don't let the arm, because if I'm training your balance and you're doing everything with your arm and you, I am not really working the full integration of the body. And sometimes I see videos on YouTube or, or my clients come because they came from other uh, professionals and they say they're like, <laughs> because the professional is not really alert of all this food uh -oh, you connection froze. that the entire body has. I, I didn't freeze, Debbie. I am still here. Well, you're back. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, so balance for you that are watching me. Um, Balance starts lying down on your side. So if you that is watching or listening to us now, if you are having a person that's having a very bad, bad, bad deal with the balance, sitting and the body falls and they don't notice, maybe we need to start working on the side. So put the person lying down comfortably doesn't need to be a hard surface sometimes you have an idea no, no no doesn't need to be that hard just in a firm surface and uh, lie on the side and what we do to start i will push the person to lose the balance forward and ask the person to come back if the person is and i'm sure we did these exercises already debbie a couple of times but the, if the person is well enough when I push, they don't go because they are in control. But I will invite the person, let me push you. Now I want you to come back. So I am doing what I'm doing is what Morgan Freeman was saying. I will give you the opposite of you what you want. I take you off the balance you backwards and I ask you to do a couple of times do both sides depending on the situation I'll put the legs bent to help or keep the legs straight to have uh, another way to make it harder and this happening in the sitting position same way I'll take you off balance right to the sides is easier to the front is the second easier to the back is harder because we don't have an idea what's going on over there. It's more scary. And the standing is the same thing. I will push you to one side. I'll push you to one other side, to the front and to the back. Of course, always paying attention, being close enough that something happen. Never push in a way that the person will fall, right? So very cautious, very carefully doing this. And then when the person starts being a little bit better 
or if I am testing and I see that the person is good enough to do this, then we start raising one leg and hold the, the other leg and could be like one foot in front of the other until we get the point that we put unstable surface. That you are familiar, Debbie, that uh, it could be a cushion. There are lots of different uh, unstable surfaces. There are kind of uh, uh, move ones that make movement. They are just soft ones that your foot goes a little bit deep in. There are lots of ways. But the important thing is not allowing the compensations. Otherwise, we don't really activate the big center and everything else that this big center has control of. Any question? No, that I, that makes sense because I mean you do do that with me, um, and and I see it, and I'm really pretty alert to, and I will use my arms to compensate if I'm finding that I'm really tipping one side or another. Then I my arms will go in for that balance, like the trapeze guy they have that balance pole that they're walking with but that's there that's a little harder I don't you know but yeah so it's like but most of the time my arms don't go out I'm usually pretty centered unless I feel like I'm really losing control and but yeah I love, that I love you said that I'll tell you why Debbie, one thing is you are with the professional. In this case, you are with yeah. me. One thing is we are together and I am working your balance. So I have to leave everything out to provoke. I am yeah. just instigating your brain and everything else. Sometimes I do, I, I have to make almost impossible to move anything because I want the reactions of the feet. For people that have a, a, a foot that doesn't have reactions of balance, the lady or the gentleman that, so I have to go until I see that foot working. But when you are by yourself at home, at a party, in the park, at, then forget about holding. Yeah. That's the moment your brain is testing that if you're really ready. So you do everything you can. What I have to say to people, to older people, mainly to older people is some of us, and when we start losing our independence or losing the authority over our own life when people get older or have a family that is too much suffocating and the, the lady doesn't know what to do to have her voice right to be heard yeah. and her desire made sometimes what happens is um the the i lo i lost my my train of thought i'm sorry um walking alone the the thing is the balance becomes a uh, a uh, almost a uh, the pride so it's the, the last thing they have is the control of their own body. Yeah. That's what I want to say. That's the last thing because they took my house. They took the key of my car. They took this. They took that. Sometimes they, they put me in a facility. So the last thing I, I really grab, nobody can take it, is what I will do with my body. Or sometimes what I will say to hurt others. Because it's the only power that, uh, that is left. So what I see many times when I get the, the, the person, the lady uh, or gentleman after the trauma, after broken leg, or, is because they see they don't want to ask for help, right? So, for example, let me show you something here. Yeah. Just show. So I'm sitting here. I'm sitting here. This is a chair, right? I'm sitting here, but my arm doesn't go right there. I'm putting myself a little bit further. See, 
my vision could be compromised in a way yeah. that uh, sometimes the the depth our uh, our vision the depth of our vision is not good enough but sometimes i but i take the risk right i take the risk and taking the risk is where and when the person falls yes so um what i always tell my clients but the ladies and stuff is like only move when you have your hand touching something. Not when you have the vision and it's it's so close. I will raise and reach. That's the moment the accident happened. Yeah. Because or the thing moves or you think it's that close and it's not. And then the falls happen a lot. And then the broken bones can be well, nowadays we have so so much of resources, right? That uh, the surgeries are amazing and the results are good, but sometimes it it's not. So we want to avoid, right, to have surgeries, or to, we want to avoid anything that takes our our balance and our health away. But uh, that's that's the one thing that uh, sometimes they are lying on the on bed and uh, they ask for a cup of water or something. And it's taking long, and sometimes people don't really serve the elder right away. They make them to wait to change their diapers. They take, they make them wait to eat, to get clean, to get a cup of water. Depending on where they are, they take a long. So they have the initiative to do themselves. And uh, what I have to say to anybody that. Uh, needs help to walk or to move is make sure that you're safe right because the the losing balance is very much a reality for all of us and the falls inside of the house are the most common tragic falls in people's life falling in the bathroom is number one of death. Falling, I'm saying again, falling in the bathroom is number one cause of a death when you are home and you fall. Why? First of all, the surfaces are pretty hard. Second, everywhere has a corner. If you fall, your head can hit the floor. Yes, of course. Can hit the sink. No good idea. The toilet, not a good idea. If you have a tub or if your shower has a little bit of a, of a step, bad idea. So be careful. If you are struggling, dealing with the lack of balance or start being a little bit challenging, you, you see that your my balance is not that good. Don't take the risk. That's the best thing I can tell you. Because I have... Uh, People that I know, clients that I have, they put the. I have one client that he used to uh, dry himself and throw that towel that he dried himself on the floor to get off the, the shower. Put his foot there in that towel that is slippery. There are people that have beautiful rugs in their bathroom. But they are not, they don't have a grip. They slide. So you are all wet. You put your foot off the shower, off the bathtub, and you put your foot in something that is it's not firm. You fall. And you can break something. You can die. Let's right. You can be disabled for the rest of your life, right? You can lose vision. You can lose so many things. Or you can break a bone or many bones. So that's uh, that's uh, what I uh, mostly what I have to say about balance. And if you feel that uh, it's just a starting, don't don't let to don't wait until get very drastic and dramatic. It's not uh, it's not a bad thing to ask for help, right? It's a bad thing if you fall and then it takes like hours to be 
to be uh, uh, helped, right? So ask for help. Go to a physical therapy. Maybe go to a gym that has a good personal trainer that is trained, that's expert in, in elders or people with disabilities, that has the patience and won't overdo anything. Uh, a physical therapist, of course, or a coach that is a physical coach, whatever it is, right? And, uh, and keep yourself active because we never know how many years of life we'll have, right? We don't know when we get that text message today, I'm taking you, right? <laughs> right? We never know. Oh, we, no. <laughs> we don't know. So we never know. So why, if, if you have 20, 25 years more of life, oh, I'm already 65. And so, and oh, I'm already 75. So go have some activity, safe. If you, if you are able to walk by yourself, walk 15 minutes a day. Oh, it makes wonders, right? Do something that keep your body active. Eat well, cut the things that everybody knows what's good, what's not, right? Sleep well. Sometimes the lack of sleep is what makes people lose their balance because they didn't sleep well. If you take medication, talk to your doctor. If you wake up and you are a little bit zombie, talk to your doctor. Maybe it's not a matter of change the, the, the substance or to decrease. It's just to change the time. Maybe you need to take that medication a little bit earlier before you go to bed. Because when you wake up, it's still in a high effect and it's taking your balance away. So lots of things that uh, when you get a professional that has the time, the patience, and the knowledge to talk to you, it's it will make wonders in your life, right? So any question, Debbie? No, I mean, you've made some really good points. I mean, back to the bathroom, the one thing you, when you talked about the rugs, um, the what, one important one is the one that's inside the bathtub, the rubber mat, so that you don't slip with the soap and all of that. Uh, yeah. And I, I'm trying my best, but I'm not real good about taking my cell phone and my telephone to the bathroom because I don't feel those are the places to use those items. So I'm not in the habit of taking them in, but I keep telling myself I really should take them just in case something happens and I slip and fall. I'd have to figure out how to get a hold of 911 with the phone 10 rooms away or whatever, you know, down the hall. And, but it's like, I really am trying to convince myself because that is the one place that you usually slip and fall. And if it's not there, it's usually sometimes in the kitchen because you've dripped water on the floor you know, because you're moving from stove to stove and, you know, sink and it's yeah. like, you, okay. you put a very important point, Debbie, they inside the bathtub or inside the shower and in the, in the kitchen as well. Some gel, right, that uh, we, we use, right, I use, I recommend to you. And also another very important thing that when you made the construction in your house and you change yeah. the, it's the handles. Oh, so yeah. people feel old. That's another thing I want to say. Sometimes if you need a walker, right? It's, it's uh, Sometimes it's temporary. Don't fight with the walker. Take the connotation, the idea, the, 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 the meaning of the walker is for old, old people, disabled people. Take this. It's a help. And the, the handles in your bathroom are necessary. I'm, I'm still relatively young and I remodeled my bathrooms and I said, handle in the shower, handle outside the door and in, in the bathroom, not for now, but it's in place for later. And you never and know. Debbie, Debbie, you never know if you was lit. Well, you yeah. were taking your shower, your shampoo right now. You were pretty able, but if you slip, it's there. It's there. I use them all the time and not because I need to, but I'm getting myself in the habit that I know that they're there. I can grab it. It, it is there. And um, it, it's just that extra little safety feature that I found that, you know, oh, 
you know, I said, I'm going to age in place. So let me put it in now while I'm in my 50s and my 60s, because I know that they're there. They are very secure and they're not going anywhere and I can get to them. And it's like, yeah. And the rubber mat on the floor in the shower, um, the gorilla mat. And, and, and when you have your rugs around the house, yeah, be careful. Yeah. Ladies trip. Ladies trip in rugs and edge of rugs and also the flip-flops and yeah. slippers. I want to make a huge parenthesis here for ladies, some ladies that like is slippers. So for you family and for you ladies that like slippers, they are comfortable. But if you are not raising your feet the way you raised before, if you're walking, because you're home most of the time and if it's very dangerous, give to your older parents or family members or friends something that has a something in the back. So it holds the slipper on the feet. So the feet is held inside. So it's not a way to lose the balance or your foot, the slipper is here, but your foot dance on the slipper or the, or the flip-flop. That's a, that's a passport to disaster. So. Oh. <laughs> and the rubber gripper slippers or the rubber gripper on the bottom of your sit shoe yeah. Yeah. so that it catches the floor or the carpeting and yeah. you have to pick your yeah. feet up and and for you for you my friend that likes to walk in socks in the house i have a big big communication for you if you like to walk with socks in your house and it is comfy for whatever reason make sure you buy the socks with those rubber dots. Don't walk with your socks in the house. I know you feel safe. You feel, if you're a guy, you feel macho, you're strong, you're young. But do you know why we call accidents? We call accidents because things happen when you don't expect Things happen in a way that is so unexpected that we call accident. You don't use socks to fall. You feel pretty much, of, or you lady feel pretty strong. You've been doing this for years. I see people going up and down stairs inside of the house, wood stairs. It doesn't matter. Oh, cut its carpet. Carpet doesn't have a friction, baby. Doesn't. So, be careful so you avoid accidents. The best way to heal is to avoid the problem. So that's what I have to say today for you. I am so happy that you are here. By the way, my name is Katia Ferreira. My, uh, I am a physical therapist. I've been doing this for 40 years. And along of my 40 years of experience, I've uh, been collecting lots of uh, holistic practice. I love Reiki, cranial sacral therapy, Ho'oponopono, EFT, many, many body work uh, therapies and uh, coaching more, most lately eight years ago and uh, hypnotherapy and Pilates. So what I do today, I put all these tools that I call my Mary Poppins bag. I put these elements in that together, integrated and whenever the client needs, it's there. That's why we have the body, the emotions, the mindset, and the spirituality together. Today, you have a little um, a, a demonstration of how I work all these elements that's part of our life together for your benefit, your well-being, and uh, to avoid accidents and be happy and healthy for how many years God gave us, right? So do you have any final words, Debbie, you want to say? No, I, everything you've said is is so true. And we've practiced quite a few of them. Um, and it's always good to get a refresher course um, on a lot of the techniques that you've been teaching us. You teach them and then we kind of 
practice them for a while and then we forget. So the refresher courses are always really good. And I am really consciously trying to, the balance thing is important to me because I know as I'm aging, my balance is getting a little weaker and I'm doing everything I can to still stay upright and not do it. And there are times where it's like, ooh, one footing it is kind of like, oh, okay. And I can feel, but I'm pretty, pretty stable, but it's always good to keep those practices in mind and take those safety precautions too. Cause I sure did when I started and I'm so glad I did. I mean, for the future, but they've come in handy a few times when I haven't been feeling so well, it's like, okay, I think. And, and I also put, when I remodeled, I put in a, a, a bench in my shower so that if it came to, I could sit to take a shower so that I didn't have to worry about standing and taking a shower as I got older. So there are lots of things to think about when you're doing that and balance is, is critical. So yeah. keep practicing. Yeah. And, uh, and uh, you know, you, you as a person that does other things, you don't have to know these things. Don't yeah. feel guilty or don't regret if something happened to you or a family member. You were supposed to ask or to have your, your professionals that uh, just bring to you in advance so you, you don't get these surprises. So don't feel guilty. Don't feel bad. If you have questions, you will see my telephone number and my, my email will be here um, available for you. If you are local, I am here in Bellflower, California. If it's not, we also offer work like on, on digital and, uh, and uh, it can help you a lot. We are about to start our Midlife uh, Magic uh, group coaching program soon. So keep in touch and you will have a chance to learn a lot about yourself and about uh, everything else that's around you, physical, mental, emotional, and spiritually. So, Debbie, thank you so much for oh, being welcome. here today. Yeah, yeah. It, it was good. I, I, you know, the opportunity to stay upright is is the key there. <laughs> and I love you. Thank you so much for being here and so being such a loyal client. And uh, um, goodbye, people, and take care of yourself. And if you have any doubt, just feel free to call or to ask or to send an email. I'm I'm pleased to help. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.